good morning, or is it a good morning? Kind of an annoying start to the day. The dude I rented our motorbikes from for two whole days came to my room this morning asking for the bike back and demanding I give him the key. Even though it hadn't been two days, it had been a day and a half. Which is really annoying because I needed the bike to go to the cash point. The nearest one is kind of far away and I don't have enough cash to pay for my room for the last two nights. So now I'm kind of going on a long walk to find that which has got me irritated. Today I'm heading to the island of Nusa Penida, which involves me going to a place called Yellow Bridge where I can find a boat to get there. But so far, everyone has quoted me rip-off prices to get there. It's less than 10 minutes drive away and they want large sums of money to get there, more than it's worth. I'm just having a day where I'm kind of tired of being ripped off and harassed, which is happening right now as people shout for me. Further disaster, my data isn't working. You need to turn on the use of Magstripe ATMs on the Monzo app to be able to use the ATMs here in Indonesia. And I can't connect to Monzo right now because I have no data, which is fantastic. I don't know why it's not working, but another hurdle to jump over. So I'm heading to a world rung with my remaining cash to see if I can connect by using the Wi-Fi to then do that. I had a little bit of food and I feel better now. Sometimes that's all it takes. I do tend to get a little bit hangry, but I wasn't even that hungry. I was just frustrated more than anything. So I'm on my way back to the cash point with hopefully a working card to see if I can in fact get cash before starting the long walk back to the homestay. Success, I now have money. There's one less stress to deal with. Picked up my bags, now very, very sweaty. Now I'm gonna see if I can thumb a lift to Yellow Bridge. Trying to hitchhike for a while, I realized that nothing is free in Indonesia, no matter how hard you try. But eventually, one of the workers from the hostel came out and gave me the price that I wanted after making me wait for a little while. So now I'm just getting a public boat over to Nusa Penida. This guy, right here, he was one of the people that pulled over while I was hitchhiking and told me he was going in the opposite direction to Yellow Bridge, but he would take me there for 100k. Um, and now he's here by coincidence. It's just a little bit of a shame that you're not willing to help people out just out of the goodness of your heart, um, especially when this is such a religious country, but I guess people got to eat nonetheless. Well, at long last I made it to Nusa Penida Island. I had to wait maybe an hour and a half for the boat to be full up enough, which wasn't so bad because I was just practicing chilling playing my guitar, but Turns out it wasn't 50,000 at all. When I got off the boat, the driver asked me for 75 and you know, I'd already taken the boat so I couldn't argue with it as much as I tried and had watched every other passenger get off the boat and pay 20,000 but I guess that's just the way that they do things here. It is really, really frustrating. I'm trying not to let it get to me but it's just the way the country works, I guess. But I'm gonna continue haggling as best as I can. Maybe I'll get a little bit better but for now, I'm gonna keep getting a little bit ripped off. Scooter time, 70,000 per day for two days. My hostel is about two miles away, so it's easier for me if I just get a scooter now and drive there. <laughs> this guy's hooking me up with a good price. A giant bug or something similar flew into my eye on the way, which really, really hurt. But about 10 minutes down the road, I've arrived here at Full Moon Bungalows. I'm staying in a dorm room tonight. On the way up, I passed a load of dive shops and also free diving shops, which I'd really like to do because I've heard the diving here is really, really good, but Actually, I think I busted a rib surfing in Changu, and uh, if I go under any kind of pressure, that's really gonna hurt it. But also, my sister told me that you can get something like a, I don't know the name, but air in your lung, and if you dive with it, it can kill you. So I'm gonna give diving a miss for now, which is a shame, but definitely gonna get that free diving course done at some point. It's just one thing after another today. I'm all checked into my new place. It looks pretty nice, but they've just told me that there's no keys for the lockers because people have already lost all of them, so basically there's nowhere for me to put any valuables and the dorm itself doesn't lock, so if anyone wants some free shit, come get it, basically. I'm gonna take, I think, maybe like a half hour, 40 minute de-grumpify rest, and then hopefully I'll feel ready and energized to take on the day. There are definitely some days that test you as a traveler, but you know, out of everything that's gone wrong today, there could have been so much more that have gone wrong. And at least it's not raining, even though now I have, in fact, jinxed it. It's definitely better to have a stressful day as a traveler doing something than you love. 
than a boring day doing something that you hate. So I'm still gonna count my blessings and be very grateful for the fact that I'm here. All right, well, it doesn't appear that there's too much going on in my hostel right now and there's not many people around. There's actually one guy in my room who's just straight up passed out. So I am gonna go back on the bike and head for a little explore. There's some really pretty sights in and around Nusa Penida. So I'm gonna go check them out now. So I just arrived at the parking spot for Goa Goa Giri Putri, it's called. That was a recommendation of a temple given to me by Backpacker Tampan, thank you for that. If you haven't checked out his channel, do already. But I got here and I have to rent a sarong. I'm gonna guess this is just traditional attire. I kinda like it, it looks good, it suits me. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a Hindu temple because Hindu is the primary religion of the Bali area, uh, despite the fact that the rest of Indonesia is a Muslim country and it's actually the most populous Muslim country in the world. Okay, I'm going into this hole to find a temple. <laughs> oh my god, kind of tiny in here. This is definitely the last place I would expect to find a temple for sure. Wow, this is weird. This is huge. It's crazy. When I said I was coming to a temple, I did not expect it to be inside a cave. And there are bats everywhere. So when you first get inside the temple after collecting your sarong, you have to sign in your name and leave a little donation. They don't really say how much, but they do give you a free water. And then just before entering the little hole that you go in, they actually splashed me with holy water, um, which I wasn't expecting. So that was cool. I wonder if people actually come inside here to pray though, because it's like kind of damp and you might, I don't know, get a little bit muddy. It doesn't seem like there's any, any sort of prayer area or area of worship, but there's no information around and the people don't actually speak any English, so I can't really find out too much about why it exists or what the purpose of it is or if it's particularly religious for a specific reason. Okay. This is looking like a little more of an area that people might conduct some sort of ceremony. Um, and maybe this is some kind of altar. I don't know. It's hard to say. It appears we have reached a dead end. It gets quite a bit cooler when you're underground and no sunlight, but this one is equally hot and equally humid. Hence why I'm still sweating quite a lot. And there's actually fans dotted around the place. It's kind of a tight squeeze to get in and out of this entrance exit way. It's only a tiny little gap. And I'm not a little dude. Quite sweaty from the climb up and down and the humidity of the cave itself, but after a quick Google of the place, on two different sources, I couldn't confirm whether or not it was specifically a Hindu temple, but what was clear from both places is that it is actually used for ceremonies and worship today. People do go in there. So that's pretty cool nonetheless. It's a shame I couldn't find out more information. I did ask a couple of people, but nobody really seems to know why. Now I'm gonna go back on the bike and head in the opposite direction to see if I can't catch the sunset at Crystal Bay. I'm supposed to sunset in about an hour, so I should make it. Well, I drove as fast as was safely possible to get here to Crystal Bay for the sunset. And on the way over, I saw a glowing red sun. It was looking really, really promising. I get here, and as lovely as it is, the sun is behind that place, which is really annoying because it looked like it was gonna be an amazing sunset, but it's still quite pretty. I'm still gonna just uh, chill out, soak it all in. As the sun is setting now, it is time for me to say goodbye. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe, and I will see you again soon with another vlog. Goodbye.